Hello everyone and welcome to another video. We're going to talk about the 2TC Roost guys today. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to link a transcription of the build order in the description below. And if you have any questions, let me know as well. Otherwise, enjoy the video. All right. So when we are spawning in, we want to be building a hunting cabin immediately with four villagers. We're going to queue up villagers and we're going to go scout. Two things here. So we're building the hunting cabin with four villagers. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to not skip the first villager. We're going to get another villager just by making our villagers normally from the town center and then scouts from the hunting cabin. That's why we are rushing the hunting cabin to get another scout out early. Now, for scouting early on, you're going to go for three scouts. And that is pretty much in every single um, scenario. Uh, but going for three scouts is going to make you able to go very aggressively with the first one. So this guy will go and look for enemy deer camps because we're going to be going for the bounty, of course. We're playing as the roost. The guy, he will be going to the enemy side and he'll try to find those deer camps that are going to be around the enemy's base. There's two deer camps for each base. So see if you can find at least one of the opponent. If not, you have to at least get like two deer camps. That's a good number to go for. Because if you can get two deer camps and four wolves, you'll hit 250 bounty, which is our gold. Anything more than that is also pretty cool. And for getting 500, we can use high trade house. But I will talk about the H3 landmarks later. We're going to be doing three scouts. So one aggressive, one defensive. And then the last one can go wherever the first one didn't get to go. Or wherever you think is best for it to go. You need to get sheep, so at least one of your scouts has to return at some point early on, because otherwise you're going to run out of sheep. Since you're going to have all your villagers rallied to food here in the beginning, there's going to be a large consumption of food. Therefore, this guy here, once he gets two, three sheep, at this point, around two minutes, you should be uh, going back immediately. Otherwise, as you can see, we are almost out of sheep here. So uh, that's important. Here comes in two sheep. The other guy up here, he's looking around, finds a wolf. It's very important when you're out and you find bounty, especially around your base. Let's say I, this scout here went forward and there was a deer camp here. I would kill it immediately because there's no reason to spend time going back and forth or sending other scouts to some spots. You can consider it with the first one, but I would definitely recommend that you go for the hunts whenever you get them because there's a chance that your opponent might send the scout as well to your base because they will be going to scout. And so killing deer camps immediately is very important. The wolves, however, you can sort of postpone a little bit if you're, for example, around the enemy's base looking for a deer camp. That is the early game for the ruse in Dark Age. Now, for the build order. So we are rallying to food normally. We've got the hunting cabin building scouts. Now we have an age up time at around 2.30, sometimes a bit later, sometimes a bit earlier, depends on if you get your sheep in. You're going to age up with five villages. You're going to put it on the wood line and gold here. We want to secure gold because if we are up against somebody who is going to apply a lot of feudal pressure, having wood and gold is going to make it so that we can always make knights. And uh, if we have some good scouting and we get the sheep, then the uh, the resources early on won't be a problem. If we put it on the stone, then we might not get our wood secured and we might not get our gold secured. So I recommend putting it over on the gold. Then you're going to take the straggler trees. So you have foreign food for constant villager production. And then you have these two straggler trees that you're going to be chopping. Once the straggler trees are chopped, these guys are going to go to the stone. This can be a bit, you know, complicated, but I would advise you to look at the build order transcription. It will show you how you should do this. Basically, five villagers early on go to the straggler trees and then you start rallying to the stone the villagers from the kremlin will build a lumber camp and the reason they're building it is because you won't gain anything from building a lumber camp early on you won't get the 20 percent extra drop off without a, a wooden fortress or the kremlin so they're going to be building it afterwards these guys will go to wood once you've chopped the true struggle trees you go to stone with those as well and this macro works pretty well it makes it that you're able to drop a second town center at 515. Sometimes it's 525, depending on spawn and all that. But two struggle trees into stone mining. That's the way to go. We're going to be building a house as well. B build it when you see fit. Build it with whatever villagers. You could build it with stone villagers. That's probably a good idea. Get the lumber camp up. Now, sometimes you get a lot of bounty. If you get 250 bounty, you should go for the wheelbarrow immediately. If you get... 350 bounty the uh, order of upgrades should be wheelbarrow then you're going to get double broadaxe because double broadaxe is really good for archery production so 
you should go for. Village, uh, wheelbarrow, double broadaxe, and then you get all the other upgrades afterwards. For example, when we we're going to put the second TC down, we're going to put it on the deer here or up here. And then we should get survival techniques immediately, as you should be doing any time you go on deer. All right. So we are about 45 seconds away from aging up. This build here doesn't have any early production early on. And the reason we are allowed to do that is because we have the Kremlin. And these supply points, though we don't spawn in with one supply point like we used to with Roos, it's still after one minute that you get one. So you can actually spawn in the militia the moment that you're going to go out and start building the second town center. So if there's some early harassment, let's say some early spearmen from an Ottoman, then you can take those now. As you can see, there's a ticket here. So use the militia and then go out and secure a second town center with them. This makes it so that for Rus, it's easier for them to secure more food because our second town center has to be dropped at a food source. We won't have sheep forever and it's better to go for some higher gathering rate uh, resources like the deer. So that's what we're going to prioritize. We're about 530 now where we are, we're heading towards the location here. We were able to build the second town set at 515, but we want to get into a nice position. So 530, we drop it down here at the deer and the berries. Very cool. Use the militia if you're under pressure. And uh, that's the basic of the two town center build. After that, I would recommend you go to stable. So you get one stable and then you start making a lot of archer ranges. So one stable and then two, three archer ranges. Then you can add in, depending on what your opponent does, um, barracks for spears. Um, to counter the horsemen that your own that your opponent makes, or you add in more stables and more archers. You want to scout your opponent so you can tell what to go for. At this point, you just want to gather wood to make more production. You want to gather stone, so five on gold for constant night production out of one um, stable. We're getting the upgrades now. I didn't get them before, just for reference, because it's not realistic to get 450 bounty. This is a um, this is a an AI game, so. Wheelbarrow is going to be something you get now that you have the gold for it. So once you're able to age up and you have, let's say, 350 gold from scouting, so you have effectively gathered 200 gold from bounty, then you would get the wheelbarrow. But I wouldn't get wheelbarrow if it's going to make it so that I, I'm going to struggle on gold and have to go for it um, in my dark age. We're going to go for gold vein later on. Now, this Kremlin is really nice because... Essentially, we can't be raided. The opponent can't move around our back line. The wood line here is very defended, plus the gold is defended. And so we put our production around here in the back of our base. We don't want to put the production in the front because then our opponent can camp it should we lose the map control. Right. This guy here, we're going to split approximately 50-50 in the early game here for wooden food because we're going to be making knights that require a lot of food. And we're going to make archers and they require a lot of wood so you can think of that as sort of 50 50. if you want to get a better picture of this if you want to get to know how many villages you should split specifically for each type of unit you want to make go on aoe4 production calculator i'll link it in the description it's a very nice tool you can use for this anyways you just build up your production now you get two three archer ranges then a, a blacksmith get the plus ones and uh then you start applying a lot of pressure. I would recommend you go for Feudal All-In. Roost is one of those civs that are very good at, good at doing that because you have Militia. So if you want to do a really good push into an enemy's base where you dive villages and uh, try to take your opponent out, go with the Militia and then push all together. So now we're at eight minutes into the game. We have four production buildings up and running, getting the Blacksmith. And then we're going to go and get the Steeled Arrow whilst we're making Knights. Over here, we are securing more deer, and later on, we're going to go for the deer over here. You can also go for the boar. It's also almost a knight equivalent in gold that you get from killing the boar, so 75 gold. Remember, knights are exclusive uh, to Rus, and therefore, you're going to be stronger versus most opponents early on. Because the knights are a heavy unit, and so you can actually take fights against some of the counter units as well though you don't want to engage too many spearmen which is why we are making archers harass but don't dive town centers you don't want to take unnecessary damage and so whenever you can kill a villager that's a good trade if you lose one knight and you get one villager i would probably think of it sometimes as a good trade but you want to still have an army that could defend yourself so in a case where you lose let's say i lost these knights here and i only had my archers here i would have a problem because my opponent is making horsemen so 
we want to be rallying towards the front. Don't rally like here at the base. Rally somewhat around the middle and then add them into your control groups later. Just so you don't lose them. If you have a bit of downtime on the raiding, let's say our opponent is doing some other resources that we can't raid, go and kill the uh, boar with the knights. There might be two boars in the map, but we haven't gone for them. Sometimes you do. Just take eight, eight villagers if you are. Um, but if you haven't, take the knights and go and kill the boars because the bounty is nice. You might get closer to 500 bounty. And so when we are going to go to the castle age, which I'm going to talk about now, we can go for high trade house and then have a shorter uh, amount of time until we get to the 500 bounty mark, which is super strong. Okay. I would definitely recommend going for high trade house. Though if you are playing one town center, let's say against HRE, you can also try to do some aggression, but not all in. And then go for Abbey of Kings. Not Abbey of Kings, sorry. The Abbey of the Trinity. And then uh, go and take those relics. And uh, yeah, that's probably why you want to do in most situations. You want to go for the High Trade House. Um, the Abbey of the Trinity can be used in niche situations. And there are some nice unique upgrades. But for the most part, we aren't going to focus on religious units. We're going to focus on massing units. And the religious units can come in when it comes to relics and sacred sites. So, if you go for Castle Age, always go for those. If you go High Trade House, save 200 wood, and then flop down a Monastery very quickly, so you can take Relics. Anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed this guide here. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I will do my best to answer them. And uh, suggestions as well are very welcome for videos. Um, this was a suggest suggestion from multiple viewers, so um, bringing you this Roost guide has been... Uh, very helpful to me as well. Anyways, I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, see you in the next one.